Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us work with the atoms. And of course, the most famous C2B molecule is water. We have talked about water. Okay. Symmetry operations are the same, but let us use this O and oxygen atom and the hydrogen atoms as, as the basis. Now, it, hydrogen atoms do not really have A and B written on them, but then we have to write a matrix, right. So, if I write H and H, it will be very confusing. So, let me use the labels A and B. Let us pretend for a while that we can make out between the red colored hydrogen atom and the blue colored hydrogen atom. Okay. And here I have just written A and B. What will be the matrix for E for this basis? No matter what the basis is, matrix for E remains the identity matrix, right. And in this case also we have a basis that is three dimensional. So, here also we have 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1. Okay. What about C2? What happens in C2? O remains O. O would better remain O for everything, is not it? No matter what we do, if there is a, if oxygen becomes hydrogen, then either it is not a symmetry operation or uh, you are a wizard of uh, nuclear transmutation. Okay. Since we are not, oxygen would better remain oxygen, fine. Now, what happens to A and B? They get interchanged. So, let us write the matrix now, 1 0 0, what will be the second line? 0 0 1, right. So, see now what has happened? You have gone off diagonal, the 1 has gone off diagonal, right. Why? Because A has become B, B has become A. What is the third one? 0 0 1? No, no, 0 1 0, 0 1 0. A and B have interchange. Convince yourself that this is the correct matrix. Are we convinced? Good. Now, what about sigma Zx? Sigma Zx should have the same matrix as E, right? Same 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1, right? What about sigma V dashed Yz? Again, O remains the same. A and B interchange positions. So, the matrix will actually be the same as C2, right. So, now can you block factorize this? What kind of block factorization should we do? Where should we draw the lines? Remember, all the four matrices have to be split in exactly the same way. How, where will we draw the line? No, I will draw a horizontal line and a vertical line, but where? First row, first row, first column, after first row, after first column, like this. Huh? Now, look at the blocks, maybe re remove 0 and look at the blocks. So, we have 1 by 1 block and we have a 2 by 2 block. Uh, the thing is, uh, when we talk about classes, we talk about irreducible representations only. Okay, right now I do not know at this point, but I actually know that the second one is a reducible representation. But then officially in this class, we do not know whether the second one is reducible or irreducible. If it is reducible, then the question of class does not arise. All right. So, these are the blocks. Do you all agree? This is how we should draw the lines, right. Once again, 1 by 1 matrix and we have a 2 by 2 matrix, okay. So, write them. So, now what do we have? We have two representations. The first one is 1, 1, 1, 1. No matter what you do, this guy is so stubborn that he is not going to change, right. 1, 1, 1, 1. So, this is a one dimensional, therefore, irreducible representation. 
okay understood and it is actually a special kind of irreducible representation all the characters are one which means so uh, what is the basis here o right which means no matter what you do no matter which symmetry operation you bring in o does not change o does not change means what character of one means it is symmetric right so o is symmetric with respect to all the symmetry operations right so when you have a representation like this everything is one then you call it the totally symmetric representation so 1 1 1 1 or 1 1 1 or 1 1 1 1 1 1 whatever it is if all the characters are one or if all the numbers are one for now let us say that then that is called a totally symmetric representation the basis of this representation is symmetric with respect to all the symmetry operations that you use okay and of course it does not mix with anything else that also is an issue okay so one dimensional representation are we okay with this okay with the block factorization okay with the concept of uh, this totally symmetric representation sure may I move on right so moving on we have to think about this one this is a two dimensional representation right is this a reducible representation is this an irreducible representation so the question that i am essentially asking is is this are these 2 by 2 matrices diagonalizable or not this is diagonalized this is diagonalized these two are not so how does one diagonalize matrices so one way of doing it is similarity transformation isn't it but then it's not all that easily done okay but you can still try to do it and find out whether this is diagonalizable or not so that is the first question okay at this point without doing anything else i don't know whether this is reducible or irreducible with the benefit of hindsight i know that it is reducible that's a different issue but prima facie looking at this it's not so easy to tell whether it is reducible or not okay and the second question that comes to us at that time is that total how many such irreducible representations are there how many reducible representations can be there for uh, a given po point group symmetry point group how many reducible representations i am asking a general question for any symmetry uh, point group what will be the total number of reducible representations reducible representation yeah so first many and then realization dawns and the correct answer that comes is infinite i can take the uh, reducible representations and i can combine them in whatever way i want i can just keep on increasing the number of uh, the elements in the basis right if i have all the time in the world i can generate an endless number of reducible representations okay that is infinite but what about the number of irreducible representation i should have written irreducible here how many irreducible representations are there is that finite is that infinite can we determine what it is the answer is yes it is finite and the answer is yes we can determine how many symmetric irreducible representations are there are okay but how do we know that okay doing similarity transformations over and over again for everything that's not such a nice thing to do so that comes from something called great orthogonality theorem and great orthogonality theorem arises out of a group theoretical treatment of this problem of symmetry operations so that is what we are going to learn in the next few classes right so the plan of the thing first of all i'm sure many of us know what groups are but i'm also sure that many of us are rusty on this okay so but then if i say that i don't learn anything because nobody will tell me anything so let us try to learn this together okay learn recapitulate whatever so first let us introduce ourselves to what are groups second let us convince ourselves that symmetry operations 
of a molecule or of a symmetry species actually form a group. Okay, that is why group theory works because symmetry operations in a, a symmetry point group actually form a group what is called mathematically a group. Okay. This is not a senior group, junior group, high CPI group, low CPI group not like that eh? or so this is group as defined mathematically ok fine. Next is that if you have to do that then you better know a little bit about matrices. Once again everybody has studied, but old people like me have forgotten. So, let us remind ourselves that also a little bit about matrices how to diagonalize a matrix, what is the matrix eigenvalue equation, how what is the unitary matrix, what is the Hermitian matrix. Please do not get scared hearing unitary and Hermitian, these are nothing that uh, we cannot handle, we will do it slowly and we will learn together right. And then that will prepare us for this group theoretical uh, treatment of transformation matrices fine. Hence, we reach our primary goal the great orthogonality theorem and we will as we will see great orthogonality theorem will tell us will answer all these questions that we have. How many irre irreducible representations are there? What is the dimensionality of each of these representations? And then finally, what are these representations? Everything you can work out once you have uh, mustered enough courage and crossed this activation barrier posed to you by group theory and matrices. Okay, it'll take us uh, maybe a little more than a week to get here. Okay, from there we'll work out the character tables as promised, and then what we do is after that we are back in chemistry. For the rest of the semester, we start talking about applications in chemistry. We talk about molecular vital theory. Before that, we'll talk about something called symmetry adapted linear combination, and then we'll talk about bonding by and large. If time permits, we can talk about molecular vibrations. Right. So that's uh, the plan of what we are going to do.